Today I'm going to be making this to go on this. The next step for this custom watch project is to deal with the crystal. The crystal is held in place with a gasket and we need to get the correct size crystal, the correct size gasket, and then the correct size hole. And so I need to do some experimenting with that. To help with that, I got this tool here, which as I understand it, is used to push the crystal into place. But the problem as you'll see is that it's hard to get everything aligned just so. So in this episode, I'm going to create a custom piece that goes right here that helps with making sure that everything stays in alignment. This is the challenge I have, which is that when I put the watch case into this press to be able to press the crystal in place, it's hard to get it aligned exactly. And alignment is really important to be able to push the crystal in place. So I decided to make a replacement, as you can see here, that is made out of aluminum because it's a lot softer than stainless steel. And the idea is that it has a lip on it to retain the back of the case exactly in alignment. The first thing I needed to figure out was the thread. I guessed it was about M6. I figured it was millimeter because this looked like it was probably metric. And yes, indeed, it's M6. I started out with a piece of stock that was one and five eighths inches in diameter. And there's a funny story about this. I realized that I didn't have any material that was large enough in diameter. So I measured the part in CAD and said, oh, okay, I need about a three quarter inch diameter rod. But if you look here, you can see that this is actually the radius, not the diameter. So I sent out a request to a local group saying, does anyone have any three quarter inch diameter rod? Because I don't have anything that large. Someone said, yep, I've got some, and when I went to pick it up and took a look at it, I realized, no, uh, I gave them the wrong size. You may have noticed that I'm turning to the exact same depth every time, and I'm using my ELS4 Basic, which I've shown in a previous episode. What I did here is I calculated how far I needed to go, uh, based on how thick the part needed to be, plus the parting width and came up with uh, 15 millimeters. So here what I'm doing is I'm setting that depth to be 15 millimeters. With the diameter set I can switch to the parting tool and I love this multi-fix holder and its rigid setup. I'm setting the parting tool to be flush with the end of the part so that I have a well-established uh, Z0 position and then I can use the controls on the ELS4 basic to move it to the exact uh, position where I want to part it off. So that's really nice because this gives me a pretty accurate way of doing it without um, having to look at the dials on the lathe itself. For parting off, I set the lathe to the lowest speed and then it's just a long, slow process to part off through this much material. But I am pausing every now and then to break the chip so I don't get a huge curl that gets stuck in there and breaks the cutoff tool. I flipped it around and set it to be parallel and then uh, faced off the end. I'm actually stopping and backing off slightly to break the chips. I want the shoulder that uh, holds the watch case in place to be one millimeter thick. So what I'm doing is using the feature of the ELS4 basic that'll turn to an exact depth of one millimeter. Now I need to set up the x-axis so that I can do this completely automated so that it'll handle both the Z and the X and cut it down to diameter, which I'll be doing in a future video. I measured and cut a little bit more each time until I had uh, just the right diameter so that the watch case would fit on there with just a little bit of wiggle um, so that it wouldn't be too tight. This needs an M6 uh, hole in the center, so here I'm spot drilling and then drilling through with a 5mm drill, which is the correct tapping drill size for an M6 tap. 
the movement will be in place when I'm pressing the crystal into position and that means the rotor on the back is going to be a little bit proud. So I need to make sure that I have clearance for the rotor so that this jig does not hit the rotor and damage the rotor. I really love using spiral flute taps, as you can see here. It creates a nice chip that comes out the front, and that means you can power tap it without any issues. And then a quick deburr of the backside, and it's ready to try out. That fits perfectly, holds the watch case in place nicely, so when I press down with the crystal, it should work exactly the way I want. Now the moment of truth. Does the fixture have enough clearance so it doesn't hit the rotor on the back of the watch? I took all the screws out so that I could take the back off of the watch that had the movement in it. And then what I want to do is to try the fixture and see if it hits the rotor. And no, it doesn't fit. I put it back in the lathe and turned down the outside diameter just a little bit because it was too large. And then the inside diameter quite a bit. And you can see now it fits. So then the question is, does it interfere with the rotor? And if you look right here, you can see that the rotor is moving. And so no, it's not interfering with the rotor, which is great. So why is the gasket so important? We want to make this a waterproof watch. If I remember correctly, the goal is to make it waterproof to 100 meters. And that means you have to have a good seal between the crystal and the front of the watch. And the way to do that, as I understand it, is to use a gasket. Now, we've been asking a number of people, uh, different suppliers, how to choose the size of the gasket. The answers we've been getting really are not very useful. And the reason they're not useful is because I believe that they're used to giving answers for replacements for existing watches. So they say, just measure the crystal and then this is the size gasket to use. Well, we don't know what size crystal to use. We don't know what size opening to use. These are the things that we're not able to find out from the suppliers. So. That means unless we're able to find someone who has that expertise and is willing to share it, we have to figure it out through trial and error. And that's what I'm going to focus on in a future episode, which is going through the trial and error with some different gaskets, both for the, the front and the back, to try to figure out exactly what the right size is. Then, of course, we're going to need to do some testing to ensure that it is waterproof to the projected depth. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment below. And if you're already a subscriber, you might want to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I have new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.